This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. My old grandfather back in Kansas used to say, shallow minds like shallow waters are easily troubled. 2,000 years ago, the greatest spiritual teacher who ever lived on this planet said, my peace I give to you, be not anxious, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Anger lets your mind escape and bolts the door. Jesus said, judge not that you be not judged. The angriest person in some controversy or argument is usually the person who is wrong. Violence in the voice is the death rattle of reason. To get angry is to revenge the fault of others upon yourself. When a person is wrong and won't admit it, that person gets mad, have you noticed? Therefore, when you become angry, look to the reason. The solution is spiritual growth. Anger begins in folly and ends in repentance. Many men make up in wrath what they lack in reason and logic and spirituality. The person who keeps cool can ultimately be in command of the entire situation, for it is written, Greater is he who controls himself than he who takes a city. Anger manages everything badly. A mule makes no headway while he's kicking, and neither does a person. If you're just kicking and complaining, you will not be going forward in your life. And the same goes for criticizing other people. Throwing mud is ground lost. It often shows a fine command of language just to learn to keep still, to be quiet, letting your feelings get hurt, one psychologist said, is just a form of egotism. If you're so full of yourself, so obsessed and so compulsive about how you're being treated, what you're doing is revealing the extent of your egotism and your pride. And if your pride is great, your pride will be wounded greatly. The less pride you have, the less ego, the less the things that people say and do are going to trouble you and bother you and give you sleepless nights and worried days. You are valuable independent of what anybody else says about you or thinks about you or believes about you. You are valuable because you are valuable to God. You are an infinitely valuable son or daughter of God. The very worth of the creator of the universe was invested in you. That is part of you, part of your literal spiritual birthright. You are kin to the Creator, and nobody on this earth can take away that divine dignity which is yours. Nobody murmuring about you, mumbling about you, being angry at you, saying disparaging things about you can diminish your worth because your worth is of God. Why become angry? Why become impassioned and resentful of things people say about you, those people who are saying things about you? don't have anything to say about your true worth. Your true worth is of God. It is the very source of reality. That is the source of your true worth. You're a son or daughter of God, and nobody can take that away from you. Nobody on earth can even touch that divine dignity. So don't worry what they say. Try saying this to somebody, because it's true. What you think of me is none of my business. Because it isn't. Let them think and say and talk and do whatever they want. Your task, your mission in this life, if you choose to accept it, and may you choose to accept it, is to do the will of God, to give your life every day, every moment, every second, every angstrom unit of your life to God and say, use me, God. Make use of my life, my time, my energy, the breath in my nostrils, the pulse at my wrist, my heartbeat, my existence on this earth, make it count for something, and God will use you in mighty ways. Because God has a will to be done, and if you will will to do the will of God, you will become part of the great divine plan on this earth and part of building the kingdom of God upon this planet. And you'll not be troubled by what people say about you and think about you or write about you. Back in Kansas, I heard a woman say this poem that manners is to do and say the nicest thing in the nicest way. Somebody says, that sounds vapid and pale. But think about it. What if everybody on this planet did have 
good manners. We're a lady and gentleman, not trying to hurt people's feelings. The most admirable spiritual teachers I have ever met and ever watched teach and ever come to know were people who were not unseemly. They were truly ladies and gentlemen of the old school, of consideration, not of, some people talk about talking trash. They love to talk trash or dish dirt is another way of saying it. Does that help people? Is that helping people to fulfill their own spiritual potentials, making some joke about their failures and their problems, vicissitudes? Anger is a gun that bursts at the barrel and kills the holder, ultimately. It is self-destructive of you when you speak it. The best sort of revenge is not to be like the person who did you the injury, to refuse to wallow in the mud and the muck with other people who are giving gossip and talking down other people. These other people of whom you're speaking, remember, are your spiritual brothers and sisters. You have to live the rest of your life, and I believe you're going to have to live eternity with some of these people against whom you're saying all these vicious and vitriolic things. Remember, Jesus said, Judge not that you be not judged. He even said, Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Never take pen in hand while there is anger in the heart. Never form words on your lips when there is anger in your heart. There's an old American Indian proverb that anger is like throwing a stone at a hornet's nest. That's how intelligent it is. I have a friend who's an ophthalmologist, a medical doctor who examines eyes. He says he will not examine people's eyes when they're angry. The old saying, I was so mad I couldn't see straight, is true. You cannot see straight. You cannot be measured accurately for spectacles, for glasses, if you're mad, if you're angry, if you're all emotional person who recognizes the fittest moment to destroy his enemy and then and then neglects to take that opportunity is the one who deserves to be the conqueror, says an old Latin proverb. Consider that for a moment. Here you have this opportunity to destroy the person who has been besieging you, has been making your life miserable, saying things about you, and then you neglect that opportunity, and instead of destroying that person, you forgive that person, and you want to get along with that person. That's the real conqueror, say the old philosophers. It's easy to give another person a piece of your mind, but when you're through, you will have lost your peace of mind, the spiritual peace of mind, the tranquility, the serenity of spirit, which comes from having surrendered yourself, your ego, your pride and your vanity to God. Then you no longer have to expend all that energy and all that worry and concern about maintaining your own ego dignity. You can live happy, joyous, and free. As the child of God, the child of this universe, you were born and created to be. As long as vengeance sounds sweet, your hatred is not dead. As long as you harbor a desire for revenge, you're living on a spiritual level, little above the animals, or a pack of wolves, or jackals, as they say in the Middle East, howling and yapping and just trying to get their own. Is that the way we were created to live? No, you are a son or daughter of God, and God has higher purposes for you. The dog that stops to chase a flea on his tail loses the possum that he was chasing for dinner. You will lose sight of what your real purpose in life is, what you were doing, what you were planning, if you're distracted constantly by the jokes, the attacks, the criticism, people making fun of you. Set your heart and your mind and your soul on the will of God and the purpose of God, and you will have peace like a river and joy like a running stream. The most glorious victory over an enemy, after all, is to turn that enemy into a friend. You don't want to be fighting with people forever. That isn't why God put you on this earth, to see how many people you could blacken their eyes and their reputations, see how many people you could drag through the mud. You're here to live as a person serving. Jesus said, the greatest among you shall be the servant of all. The servant, the person who does things to help other people. That's the greatest person, the servant of all. Not the one who lords it over people. Not the bully who attacks and ridicules and defames somebody else. You're created to live in love and peace. Let things go when people are 
saying things about you, throwing things at you. Don't worry about those things. Jesus said, don't worry. He said, be not anxious. That's the translation of be not anxious. It means just don't worry. Be not anxietous. Be not filled with anxiety, worry, fear. He said, fear not. My peace I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The most glorious victory over an enemy is to turn that enemy into a friend. Love your enemy, said Jesus. That's exactly what he was saying. Don't live in this revenge and this smoldering hatred and anger. You were not created for that. It is not the way of the kingdom of God. And you may well be left behind in the greatest opportunity of your life, the thing you really most wanted to do if you cannot master that tendency toward revenge and ill thinking toward your spiritual brother or sister. He invites future injuries who revenges past ones. When a person's temper gets the best of him, it reveals the worst of him. God did not create you to live gritting your teeth and snarling under your breath and tossing and turning all night long mad at somebody else. He said, the way of the kingdom is to love. The love of God and the love of others, the two great commandments. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Two things you should never be angry at are the things, number one, that you can't help. Number two, the things that you can help. Don't be angry about anything. It is foolish. It is the way of a fool. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And you yourself are behaving like a fool when you act as if there is no God by not turning your life and your future over to God. Turn it over to God and give it totally to God. Don't take it back every 20 minutes or every five seconds. Give it to God and mean it. Give your friends, your enemies, your past, your present, and your future all to God, and you will find a serenity that you'll never create by trying to get even with the people other people say you ought to be getting even with. Throw mud and you'll have dirty hands whether the mud hits the mark or not, whether it hits that person you're throwing at or not. Your hands are going to be muddy. He who cannot govern himself is unfit to govern others, to be a leader of others. And in taking revenge, a person is but even with his enemy. In passing it over, he's superior because it is, as they used to say in the old days in England, it is a prince's part to pardon. If you are going to live up to the royal lineage spiritually of which you were born as a son or daughter of God, you must be a person to forgive, not just to get even. Who wants to be even all the rest of your life? There's a spiritual way where you don't get even. You actually get ahead. You get ahead spiritually, and that is to forgive. It is the prince's place to pardon. You are of royal lineage. You are kin to the creator. You are a son or daughter of God. Don't wallow down in the slaw of despond, in the muddy ditch of malcontent, gossip, anger, revenge, being mad at other people. Come up into the clear sunlight and begin to live as God wants you to live, in faith and hope and love as a son or daughter of God. That's who and what and why you are. Forget about those other things, those lower tendencies, and aspire to the very highest. Seek first the kingdom of God to the Master. And all other things of any importance or consequence, all other things will be added to you. These are life-transforming principles. And if you're intrigued by these things, write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. I've written things on finding God, getting to know God, on the spiritual life, about praying. How do you pray about these things? How do you get rid of some of these bad habits of thought and action? For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address, Post Office Box 3080 Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.